But I will say that next week's question of the day is related to this new relationship. Oh. So you might want to audit. This, intri- this is my intrigued face. Mm-hmm. <laughs> this segment of DOD TV is brought to you by Leopold, American to the core. What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the Drury Outdoors 100% Wild Podcast. This is episode number 228, if you can believe it. And joining us via his RV of silence, Matt Drury. What's happening, guys? How are you? I am in Kansas trying to kill a deer right now. (laughs) Trying. That's the operative word. So catch us up a little bit on like how you ended up out there and what's going on. Yeah, so I, I think I've talked about it before on the podcast, but you know, I got got an invite from a friend of my sister's out. My sister lives in Olathe, Kansas, and uh, she's she's known a, a guy out here through I guess through youth sports. Her her son was on a baseball team with with this guy's son, and and they got to be good friends. And he was killing giant giant deer out in Kansas every you know very consistently. And um, I guess he had always tried to get dad to come out here. And I didn't know anything about it. And dad's uh, not really one to travel anymore. So I guess <laughs> no. dad, uh, you know, you know, said no, thank you a few times. And I get the guy just reached out to me last year during the season and he invited me. And uh, so last year, I think his brother killed like a 170 inch double drop <sighs> during early muzz. And he killed a 193 inch. I think that's what it was uh, in the late season and just killing some big giant animals. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, I thought, what the heck, I'll uh, give it a shot. And when I put in for Kansas for a tag, I, I looked at the schedule. I'm like, you know what? Early season muzzleloader would work really well because, you know, early in September, I can't recall ever having really any success. I know you've had some before, but I, I just, you it's know, rare. I've never really had any luck. And so I thought, okay, this won't interfere with anything in Missouri because mm-hmm. the, the season was, I think the 17th through the 26th okay. and I could come back home and still have the whole season in front of me in Missouri and Illinois. Well, sure enough, <laughs> I head out here and, you know, I've been looking at deer cast in the 10 day and, and there was a little cool front that moved in on opening week, but in general, it's been real unseasonably warm out here. So we identified the second week of the season that come out. Cause there was about a three to five day stretch where the temperatures were at least cooler. They're mm-hmm. still warm, but where the, the lows were really low and it thought, Hey, this might not be that bad. Well, lo and behold, back home you guys had a awesome <laughs> cold front move through and uh, yep. so of course we didn't want to miss out on this opportunity so the lease that i've been talking about the new lease with that aaron and i are on and scott and, and you know all we've all been putting in the the time and the work we decided to send the landowner in uh doug who, who's been hunting with us and he's been involved in this whole process mm-hmm. uh we sent him in and aaron in on two separate spots on the farm and sure enough doug killed a 174 inch mainframe (laughs) eight (laughs) the buck is camera it it's it's a stupid kill i mean in tons of tons of pre-roll you see that deer forever you see how tall he he, he's not just tall he's also massive like he's got everything going his main beams were like 20, they took a picture of the scoring sheet and his main beams were like 26 and some change and 27 and some change. He's not, he's not wide, mm-hmm. you know, he's a standard frame deer in that regard, but he's tall. And of, of course his frame is massive and he, and his mass all the way out. And he showed up, we were actually at my house and, and Alan and, and Matt and Scott and uh, Mike, the guys from the studio were over at the house Saturday night and we were filming some stuff uh, for, uh, for some ads that we needed to do. And uh, I got the picture on my Reconic cell camera and Scott and I are like, Oh my gosh, who is this deer? He's brand new. We hadn't had them all. And I got cameras huh. all over that farm. Yeah. And we felt like we had a pretty good judge of what was there. And this deer showed up on Saturday and I sent it to Mark and Terry. I'm like, look at this thing. And I, I thought my gut was he was about 160 inch eight pointer. Cause as you know, it takes a lot to be, uh, a, you know, when, when we say a 
174 inches. This is gross. We, we don't really ever go by net. This is a gross, gross boon. And I thought, man, he's about 160 inch deer. And, um, I sent to Mark and Terry and, and Mark said, uh, you better kill him on this cold front. I was like, I'm going to be in Kansas. <laughs> Can't. <laughs> you know, the, the, and that's where the conversation ended. So Aaron and, and Doug and Scott and I were kind of putting a game plan together and we uh, elected to put Doug over on this, what we call the skinny field. We planted this biologic, we planted it basically three times. We've just had drought like conditions it's been dry, yeah. and it, it, we never get any rain. So they planted it the first time didn't come up. We thought, okay, we better replant it. So went in there and Doug went in with this pretty cool implement that he put on a skid steer Mm -hmm. because he's a construction guy by trade. So he has a skid steer. And so this thing just kind of tilled up all the ground and Scott went in and uh, they seeded it. And yet again, we really didn't get much for rain. We got rain like that day and then didn't rain again. So Scott and I were out there maybe a couple of weeks after that. And we were hanging out uh, some new cameras on scrapes. And uh, so we're like, man, let's put out some more biologic and just broadcast it and hope we catch right before the rain. It's a good enough rain that it'll sink in. We didn't fill up the ground. We didn't, you know, there was enough biologic there. We didn't want to start from scratch. So we, we, he broadcasted as I was hanging some cameras and, you know, rained again that night, really rained hard. And, and so, you know, there's a little bit of, of attraction there with that biologic. We had radishes and last bite, I think. And you look at the footage, there's not, it looks like, man, you guys are horrible farmers, which is the case, but it was enough. There's some green. There's there's some green there. And basically the Andrew Bennett, who was filming Doug, he said that deer just worked back and forth like yeah. a turkey across the food plot. And he was just looking for little green spots and he was going to it and he was eating. And he finally worked his way into like 25 yards or something like that. And, and Doug uh, made the shot and he said he hard shot. I thought it was a little low. We were a little concerned, but we looked the deer cast track and they gave it a little time, but it turns out he, that deer, as he drops into the arrow, he kind of rolled into it mm-hmm. and he hit heart and double lung and he went 50 to 70 yards and, and was dead right away. Well, that hunt and that plot gives me hope because my little suburban plot, I hunted it, uh, last, last weekend and it was dusty and dry. I mean, the biologic hotspot came up. So there's some, there was some green there, but I knew like, if we don't get some rain in a few days here, all this stuff is toast. And yeah. thankfully we got a real soaker, I guess today is today's Thursday. So was it Monday or something? We got a, we got a really good rain. And, uh, so I'm hopeful that like that'll carry us through for the next couple of weeks here and that stuff can just continue growing, but yeah, it, kill, it, killer hunt. J- definitely check it out in DeerCast. And now like all DeerCast users can view our kill shot videos in DeerCast. So they're not behind a paywall any longer. Yeah. And, and it's, it's pretty incredible that, you know, that hunt will end up on deer season 21 here, hopefully within the next week. Um, I know what this podcast we're filming it on a Thursday. We're a little bit late because of my travels, but this will probably go up pretty soon. So I would say maybe next week that, that hunt of Doug's will be on deer season 21. And it's the first, gross boon for the team of the year for for whitetails of course we've had a few mule deer already but mm-hmm. man we're off to a hell of a start that's for sure <laughs> no getting i mean that's doug's first filmed hunt and so uh, his biggest deer i mean talk about uh talk about a start to you know a great lease arrangement that you guys have together and it, it just yeah. it's just a, like a fairy tale situation it's a little unorthodox, you know, he's the the landowner, but you know, and we're leasing it from him, but the the deal is that he's also hunting it. But the reason why we did that, Aaron and him are, 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 are friends and, and he was wanting to learn a little bit more. I mean, he's hunted for a long time and he, he just wanted to learn more and, and get kind of more serious about it. And so for him, he felt like it would be a learning uh, opportunity for us. It's a great piece of dirt. And it's not that far from home, you know, and from mm-hmm. the studio, which as you know, is key for a couple guys have young families and, and trying to be home at night. So it, it's a win-win and, and I, I'm so thrilled for him, honestly, like if it wasn't on camera, I I'm sure I would have been like, oh man, but it's on camera. That's what we do. Like that, that's, that's, I'm couldn't be thrilled, more thrilled, frankly. I mean, and for him to be able to get the biggest year of his life 
six days into the season on because <laughs> you know these farms you know that's what if you've never owned a farm it's just expensive man and it's not getting any cheaper and as somebody that's leasing like i can appreciate because i have owned a farm before i mm-hmm. can appreciate like doug you know like for him to lease it out to us and trust us you know it's great that he can have the opportunity to actually harvest something on his dirt because it's his dirt yeah we may be leasing it but it's his spot so uh, it's, it's a good relationship and one I think is going to last for a long time. And I'm sure in his camp, there were some skeptics on whether or not we were going to be forthcoming with all the pictures and if he was mm-hmm. going to be able to shoot any of these big deer, but I, I mean, so it's far a so good. Man. Yeah. It's a partnership. <laughs> yeah. If he wins, we win. Right. Right. So. right. Well, congratulations to Doug. And if folks want to go watch that hunt, they can do that over in DeerCast right now. Absolutely. And look for the deer season 21 episode in deer cast probably next week or so. Yeah. And hopefully we'll be seeing one from Kansas pretty soon. So how many more days do you guys have to, to make this happen? The season goes until Sunday. Today's Thursday, Thursday. Yeah. I'm kind of, we've been here since Monday. We hightailed it out Monday to make it. I dropped the kids off at school, met up with Scott, and then we hauled butt out here and, and we made it in time for an afternoon hunt Monday and saw a couple of real good, I mean, as soon as we got into the blind, a couple big mature eight pointers, you know, got onto the mm-hmm. field. Another great, I, I think he's probably a four and a half year old, a buck where his, his, his uh, main beams almost touched there in the cool. middle. And, and he, we passed him. We probably could have had a shot at him, but he was in the Milo. And so we came back there the next uh, afternoon and those two mature eights kind of walked down that fence line again. And that's about, 400 yards to our, what do you think about that? To our South. And um, yeah. And they were heading straight down the fence line and we didn't really have a real good shot at them. I mean, you know, I'm shooting a muzzleloader. And so there's some limitations there. I wouldn't have shot anyways. It was so far away. Sure. But then at the end of the night, that a bachelor group, what's weird is they're batched up out here still. And, and all these bucks are together. Are they all hard horned? So, yes. The ones that we've seen have all been hard horned. And these bucks come out into this Milo, like there's a bachelor group of three or four of them. And this 20, 22 inch wide buck is with them. And he showed us a picture of him before we had hunted. So mm-hmm. I knew he was in there and it was the only buck that we had yet to see in, in those two afternoon hunts. And we were seeing like 30 to 50 deer, 30 deer the first night, 50 deer the second Jeez. night. I mean, it was, it, but we're looking at a lot of dirt. You know, yeah. it's a big, we could see for a long ways and sure enough, they popped out at, you know, maybe, I don't know, 7,500 yards and, but kind of towards the end of the afternoon, you know, as lights mm-hmm. fading and they work through that Milo and that Milo is so tall, you're only seeing from like here up. Mm-hmm. And the only way we were going to have a shot is if they got within about 30 yards or in where you could start seeing between the rows. Sure. And they did that. They got to within 50 and kind of worked in, but they, it was too dark and it, I think uh, last, I think legal shooting was like 806 that day. And it okay. was 807 when we finally kind of <laughs> got close enough for those deals. But, They've got to watch. <laughs> yeah. So we, we went back in there yesterday at noon and we, the wind switched out of the North to the South pressure was still good. It was kind of warm, but we felt like, okay, because of that South wind, we could do a, basically put a ground line up in that fence line mm-hmm. that the two eights have been walking down and they did it two nights in a row. Like, all right, let's try to, you know, catch them here as they're walking down the fence line. Sure. Put out, put out the ground blind uh, lunch and brushed it in and had a perfect wind for it. You know, there was no way they'd wind us coming from where they would. And, and yesterday the moon had hung so late in the morning. I mean, I forget last I saw it, it was, it was hanging really high, really late in the morning as it was setting. Mm -hmm. And I even said, I'm like, man, I bet this, I bet the deer move late this evening just because they've been up. So, you know, we saw a bunch of deer up yesterday morning late. Yeah. Sure enough, the deer just kind of moved late yesterday afternoon and we still saw a lot, but it was mostly just the does. And then Mm -hmm. finally a a buck that I, I don't know that we had seen yet. I think he's a, he was a four and a half year old. He popped out a split G2 nice buck, but he was just out of range about 230 yards. And instead of coming down the fence line, like they had all been doing from this side, Mm -hmm. he walked over to where our blind was. (laughs) Was. (laughs) Yeah. So 
it's still there. We were just not. <laughs> that's operative. So, so that's what's happening out here. We got, we're going to hunt till we're going to hunt this afternoon's hunt and probably tomorrow afternoon's hunt. This morning was the first morning we, we took off and, and we, we really hadn't been having any luck in the mornings. And it's, it's just a different style of hunting out here or, you know, what, what we're accustomed to They're mm-hmm. they're really dependent on these Milo fields and spotting and stalking. It reminds me of being out in like, you know, Alberta with Corey Jarvis or, or sure. something like that. And, you know, muzzleloader hunting and filming, like we're trying to do and get them on camera. It just, it's not ideal to do that. Knowing, I mean, we're trying to get a full frame smash on mm-hmm. camera and, and it'd be very difficult to go through that Milo and try to do that. So anyways, we're kind of switching up tactics from what, what I think the landowner is accustomed to. And so we aren't having much luck in the mornings, but um, he's got some a heck of a spot in the afternoon and we're going to keep going back to the well and hopefully run into one. And, and we're going to hunt this afternoon and probably tomorrow afternoon and head okay. home Saturday morning. Okay. Yeah. It sounds like it's just a matter of time. The deer are certainly oh. there. Hopefully, if not, I'm excited to come back next year because I think now he knows kind of what we need to do and we got a better mm-hmm. understanding of how they hunt. And so uh, we're learning a lot on this trip and and uh, can put it into play for next year. That's so part of the fun. How about you? I know you've gone out a few times so far. Yeah, yeah. I've seen very, very little. In fact, last night I went out on kind of a reconnaissance mission with the saddle. And um, I, I tell you what, like the more I use the saddle, the more I like it. Although... Yeah self-filming with a saddle is a whole layer of complexity. I got like haul lines and I got my tether line. Like there's a lot of crap going on. So it's like, it's not as light and nimble as just a straight up saddle hunt. Get a lot of extra stuff with you. Um, Last night I bumped a couple of does getting into the spot that I wanted to be in, saw a spike and that was it. Like I was really, really surprised for the area, but you know, I, I'm hunting mostly big timber and right now there are acorns dropping in different parts of the timber. And I just don't like have a good feel for which trees are producing over which. And so I think the bucks are kind of scattered throughout there just feeding along as they, as you know, they, they're keyed into the, to the good oaks, but I'm not so much. So you know, I'm not expecting a whole lot, a whole lot. It's still early season. You know, we, we did have a cool front come through, but it's still not, the action's not as hot as it's going to get. So I still got a few stands sitting at the house that I'm using this Intel to figure out where I want to hang them. So I'm kind of going in with, you know, obviously I'm bringing my bow and bringing the camera, but I'm not expecting a whole lot because these are more just kind of figuring out where I want to ultimately hang the last few remaining lock-ons that I have. Uh, so it's just nice to be out. Like, all year long, we wait for deer season and now it's finally here. And I don't know about you, but whenever it's deer season and I'm not hunting, I feel like I'm doing something wrong. Like I should be out there. I, sh- I should be out trying to make something happen. Yeah. But you got to also be smart about it. I mean, that's the one thing that you don't, it's so early. Like you don't want to overhunt. basically hit those great days and you know, stay out is going to do you a, a bigger fa- favor than being in there all the time. So mm-hmm. I, I don't know. I, I do and don't feel that way. I feel like like an out state trip. I feel like all right, we got to hunt because we're here. Yeah, we got a short amount of time. But at home, you know, other than missing that little cold front, like it's hot as hell right now. Like it's really warm still, and it's not worth going in there and screwing something up because it's gonna get better. Mm-hmm. So I think that's the hardest. We talk about it all the time. You just gotta have the patience to, you know, know that it, it's tough, but you're doing a lot you're doing more harm than good a lot of times by going in there when the conditions aren't optimal. Definitely. Yeah. And especially when you've got deer on, you know, still kind of on their summer pattern, they're showing up on camera and you want to go in there and you want to, you want to get them. But like, we've had some days where you just sweat your face off getting into the stand and that's like, who knows what kind of scent trail you're leaving, just getting in at that point. Yeah, absolutely. Well, we should we should take a second to um, to share a shout out we got from Super Podcaster Super Deercaster Brad Odom. He says, and he was talking about uh, the show we had Brandon uh, Jennings on for. He said, "Great podcast, guys! I want to thank Brandon for taking the time to be on the podcast. Congrats on his world class mule deer he harvested. I think Brandon was spot on on his tip about staying out of your hunting areas and only going in to check cameras when the conditions are right, so you don't educate your deer." You guys literally blew this podcast out of the water. Thanks again, guys, for all the info and good luck on this coming season. That was also the podcast where we cried. 
a little bit. Mm. Hey, the feedback was pretty pertinent to what we were just talking about too. Ex- exactly. <laughs> Do what Brandon does because he kills deer. So, so yeah, I, I you know, um, I, I plan on hunting a little bit on Saturday and, uh, and seeing if something, uh, something walks by, um, but, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm just so, I'm so excited. Like it's finally deer season. It's great to see the fan shares coming through on deer casts and people having success and people killing their first deer. Like it's, it's go time and we, we wait for it all year long. And speaking of deer cast, if you guys haven't, you're listening, you haven't upgraded or updated your app yet. Even if you got a free version, the up, go ahead and go to the app store and update it because there's a new look and, you know, there's some tweaks behind the scenes kind of under the hood, uh, that, that have continued to happen behind the scenes. So it'd be worth getting that newest and latest and greatest version. So please do uh, head over to your app store and, and uh, up uh, update your app and you can go to deercast.com. Uh, that's the way I use deercast almost, you know, especially if, if I'm sitting on at work or whatever, it's just on my, you know, Safari browser, it's just up all the time. Mm -hmm. And then if I need to just check, you know, okay, what's the hourly doing? I can go in and do a quick check. So deercast.com is a really good experience. If if you haven't done it, if you sit there and, you know, on your computer a lot, that's how I would log in uh, if I were you. So it's just nice to be able to see it updated there. Yeah. Yeah. And you know, Matt, speaking of deercast, it's nice that we have our own platform to share our content without having to worry about censorship from people who maybe don't understand. Maybe they're not even anti-hunting. Maybe they just don't understand the hunting culture and the methods that we use and everything like that. Because right now we're we're going to be posting a story about this pretty soon in DeerCast. But just kind of what's happening to some of the the hunting YouTube channels out there, like like the, like the guys over at Seek One. Not necessarily being banned from YouTube, but being demonetized, which for those guys, I mean, it's a, it's a big part of their livelihood. Yeah. I, you know, I internally, I talk about it a lot. I, I, I would rather just turn it off because we have other turn off the monetization part. We don't, it's not like we earn a lot off of it anyways. I mean, it's, it's okay. It's, it's decent, but like in the scheme of things, they're not turning off your hunting channel. They're turning off monetization for those guys. And those channels are, are massive, you know, view counts and stuff like that. But uh, we, we can afford to, go without the monetization side because we have television, we have deer cast, we have other, you know, streams coming through to, to help support, mm-hmm. you know, the foundation of the company. But for those guys, it, it is their livelihood. And, and, uh, it's a perfect example of why we created deer cast, you know, back in, I think 2016, we start talking about it. 17, we beta tested. I mean, we got a lot of, of time and, and effort and money wrapped into deer cast for this very reason. And, um, you know, with the intention that, it's a, I hate using this word, but it's a safe space for hunters, you know, and, and, you know, we, we want to make sure it's still, um, up ethical area to go to it's family friendly. I mean, it's not, it's not the wild West, like, like YouTube and, you know, anybody can go in and comment and, and leave a crappy remark. Like we're creating a positive experience in deer cast and, um, and one where all hunters, you know, of any kind can go in. So we're just going to keep doing our thing and, and just know any of you, you guys out there, you know, that, that want to be a part of it. This is where you could be a part of it and, and know that there's a lot of like-minded people. Yeah, because in part of the conversation I, I've been watching online is people talking about, well, we need our own platform. Like hunters need their own platform. It's like yeah. we got, we got it. One. It 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 exists. And 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 the other thing I I, can, I think we have to be careful of as hunters is not to cry wolf. Like we have to take each situation on its own merits, like situation by situation. And, and maybe there is a, uh, maybe there is some anti-hunting persecution going on, but maybe there's not like, and it doesn't help our cause when every time, uh, someone that's in the hunting community gets their, their hand slapped for something that we immediately go to, Oh, here we go. It's the mainstream media persecuting hunters or whatever. Like, let's look at each situation individually. I think like long-term we end up with more credibility because we aren't just dropping a knee jerk reaction to something that happened. Like, like, you know, maybe, maybe some of our, maybe some of the channels in the hunting industry are not following the guidelines in YouTube to a T like, let's, let's look at those and, 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 and not just be, not just be reactionary. Yeah. I mean, the reality of it is there's a lot of eyeballs in YouTube that have, 
they've never been exposed to hunting, you know? And so they're, you know, as a big corporation, they have to appease the majority of their viewers. Mm. And if they get somehow one of these videos are going viral and a lot of people are saying, Hey, this, this violates the guidelines and this offends me. Like whether we agree with it or not, the reality of it is, is we're a minority here. And yeah. you know, that you don't have much control in those big, you know, big, uh, companies like that. And here, you know, in deer cast, it's far hunters by hunters. And that's the reality of it. We do have a lot more control over it. Um, so I don't know. There's not much you need to say, really. It's a spot where any any hunter can go and enjoy, you know, content that's made for hunters by hunters. It's that simple. Mm-hmm. Um, something we're talking about internally here at the studio. I've not shared this with you yet. So this is the first time you're hearing it. I'm curious what the listeners think of. And if, if you want to sound off on this idea, uh, shoot us a message over in the 100% Wild podcast crew Facebook page. Um, but... What do you think about you and I doing some reaction videos? You know, these are popular with the kids on YouTube, but we watch some people, like one of our producers and I were talking about this morning, one of our editors, and uh, there's a, there's a movie. We talked about it with, uh, with one of our previous guests, the whitetail hunter with Josh Brolin, Hollywood's take on whitetail hunting, but we watch some of the hunting encounter clips and then we react to them on, on camera. Yes. Yeah, great in theory. I think the difficult part is we can't show any of the clips because <laughs> we don't own them. That, yeah. And, and, and that's what we're kind of working wah, through is, 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 is the fair use. Yeah. We don't want to get sued uh, walking through the fair use uh, agreement and, and making sure that everything's because we don't want to get our hands slapped by YouTube. Uh, no, <laughs> <laughs> we don't play by the rules, but there, you know, there's also a lot of great content in deer cast that we could pull that we could share and, and watch. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So, yeah. so if, if you're watching, listening right now and you have like either, uh, uh, an opinion on whether Matt and I should do this and, or you have ideas on what we ought to watch to react to, just let us know over in the, in the Facebook group. All righty. What's yeah. next, Tim? How about that question of the day? How about it? You, so, hey, Tim's doing all the legwork. Well, he usually does all the legwork, but now he's also reading all the work that he's done. <laughs> <laughs> so, I'm, I'm out in Kansas in an RV. So, what, what can I say? <laughs> yes. Down by the river. <laughs> <laughs> the question of the day is proudly brought to you by Plano. Protect your passion with a Plano case. And I have to say, like, I tricked out my Plano bow case last year. I put a, like one of those utility LED lights in it. So it like, it's like a jewel case almost when you pop it open, turn the light on at the bed of the truck. <laughs> it, <Sings> yeah, <laughs> there's like a sound effect that goes along with it. <clears throat> my son, Bo, who is nicknamed Bo Madness because he is chaos wherever he goes, he took the light off for me. And by took it off, I mean he just ripped it off. So now my little jewel case effect is completely gone and I got to rebuild it. So Cody Kaiser, Cody's part of the hundred percent wild, uh, Facebook crew folks. And he's a cool kid. He he is a cool kid. He's asking, has there, has there been any thought to creating a way to look at a historical deer cast days? It'd be very handy and much better than having to screenshot all the days on his deer cast and fill his phone memory up. Yeah. We've thought about that since about 2016, but man, it's costly. And like, we've looked into it really hard actually. And you know, the way that deer cast works, we're pulling in, it's called an API. We're pulling in basically data from uh, a service. So right now, currently we're using IBM, which is owns weather channel. So you pay for the data that you're using. And, um, you know, we use an API for our video player with JW player. Like the, these are, the, that's the back end of it. Like we're not creating these things from scratch. We are paying for parts of them and, and kind of Frankensteining, Frankensteining them together to make, what you see is deer cast. That's a very standard way of creating an app. And um, the reality of it is like, that's a different weather package. There's different API packages that we, 
you know, buy into for the data that we pull out. And for whatever reason, that historical data, and it only goes back so far. It only goes back, I think, was it a decade, Tim? Some, something like that. Like, mm-hmm. There is a limitation to how far back it goes, yeah. but it is very costly. And, um, you know, I, I'm not saying that one day we might not do it, but for now it, it, it doesn't make a whole lot of sense. Like it, it's, uh, it, it's crazy how expensive it is, but it's because it's going back and it's finding all these factors and variables that create the deer cast prediction. And it's getting all the historical data for that. to in order to put it together and pump out what you see as a, a great or a good or a bad or whatever the case is. So that's, uh, Probably not. It could be in the roadmap, certainly, but uh, I don't think it's something you'll see in the next year or two. This has been Tech Talk with Matt Drury. There you the, go. The, uh, yeah, you know, it, it's way more complex and costly than you would think. I mean, it sounds like a very simple feature, like, hey, just let me scroll backwards on the graph and let me see yeah. last week. And and believe me, like, we want it. It's, it, it is the most requested feature that we we hear about I got a dm on instagram yesterday asking about it it's it and we've heard it for a year you know uh, we launched in 18 and we've heard it since 18 <laughs> so i get it it is a cool it would be a great feature um and i'm not saying that ne- you, you know never know but in the meantime about the only one thing that mark says he does all the time is he screenshots his dailies and uh, and then he goes back and references them. And I know some other guys that that do that same thing because they've listened to the podcast or they've heard Mark talking about it. And yep. and they have some sort of fi- kind of folder filing system. It's like, all right, here's September week one, week two, week three, week four. And then they put each day's, you know, prediction screenshot in those folders. Uh, so there's a way to do it like a kind of a. Um, ham fisted approach yeah that's a good word for it because it's it's that's definitely not the easiest way to go about it but for now that's kind of all all we have yeah yep well let's uh let's do the wildlife word because that's easy that's not complex uh, I I don't know that's easy, <laughs> but it's not complex. It depends on sure. the it depends on the week. Uh, it depends on the person. <laughs> <laughs> the wildlife word this week is brought to you by Tracker Off Road, built for adventure and built to last. Get the job done with Tracker Off Road. So this is about fawns. You know, this time of year you're seeing kind of a mix of fawn like deer that still have their spots and some that don't. Most fawns are weaned off their mother's milk after this amount of time. So it's not that they won't still drink every now and again, but this is when they no longer need it on a regular basis. Is it A, five months, B, one month, C, two and a half months, or D, they are never weaned? I'm going to go with two and a half months. You just want a new deer cast hat. Nice job. Is it this one? Yeah, you you already you're already wearing it. That's great. great. For me. <laughs> that, hey, we just saved on shipping. <laughs> Check it out. There's three bucks in our account. So uh I, I know a lot of guys feel conflicted, like, should I take a doe early season? Cause I'm still, you know, she's still got fawns with her. Will the fawns survive? And and the way that most state DNRs or departments of conservation set up their seasons are around the biological needs of the game, you know, whether that's nesting or migration or whatever. And, and, and so they do the same thing with whitetails. They want to make sure that they start season at a time where if you take a doe, it's not going to endanger the life of the fawn. So like just last Saturday, I saw a fawn trying to get milk from from its mom, and 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 there are circumstances where they may even be trying and not getting anything. So, but but you know, you, I, I've also killed does into October that you start processing them and you and they've got milk in them. So, but like biologically speaking, the fawn after two and a half months can survive on browsing and doesn't need the the mother's milk. There you have. So it. there's your wildlife word, er, buddy. You're welcome. Thank you, Timothy. We're, we're changing changing people's lives. You know, I got feedback from our friend Sue over at Stanley, who uh, who was watching a couple shows ago when we when we had squab as the wildlife word. That was the baby dove. 
Ah. And you knew that. You're just. I recall. Yes. <laughs> you were looking at the ceiling for something interesting. Mm-hmm. <laughs> A lot like school. Uh, but she was like, don't call my name. Don't call my name. <laughs> What happens to be on the ceiling, Matt? You tend to look there a lot. I don't know. <laughs> but it changed her life. Now she, <laughs> now she knows what baby doves are called. So it's nice to know that the show is having an impact on people. There you have it, man. <laughs> One person at a time. Yes. It is, really ni- <laughs> it is really nice to hear feedback from folks, uh, especially like if you leave feedback for us in, uh, in, in your podcast player, like that helps. Yeah the most that helps, you know, push us to, uh, to, to where other, like other hunters are listening. Like they, it puts us in kind of that suggested list. So we appreciate that. We just want to, we just want to be as good as like the guys at working class bow hunter one day. That's all we're, that's all we're <laughs> we can aspire to. to. Well, we we got bumped down to number two in our own company for podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Time to bring in some fresh blood here. Let's see if we can get a, a show that's actually good. If, if you if you guys aren't aware of what we're referencing, um, we formed a partnership with the guys over at Working Class Bowhunter, and they're filming two podcasts a month in September, October, November, December. And uh, starting in January, they're going to have one a week, and it's exclusive content uh, for the DeerCast guys, and and uh, that's pretty exciting. We're thrilled. Those guys do a hell of a job, and, and uh, we like, you know, the – the banter back and forth. And you're going to kind of see that back and forth from here on out. That's the fun part about the relationship, but in all reality, we uh, respect those guys and and what they, they built and, and uh, the platform they have and and are really excited to have them on the team. So uh, Tim and I are gladly taking the number two spot in Drury Outdoors for podcasting. We're number two. We're number number two, but that doesn't mean we're not gunning for them. All right, Kurt, I'm coming for you boys. Yeah. It's a little friendly competition. Never hurt anybody. That's iron right. sharpens iron. Well, I, I won't fully give it away, but I will say that next week's question of the day is related to this new relationship. Oh. So you might want to audit. This, tune is, my in. Intri- this is my intrigued face. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it, which also happens to be your who farted face. Yeah, yeah. Could have been me. I don't know. <laughs> who knows? It's a small trailer. So just, uh, just remember poor Scott has got to live with you. <laughs> Scott! Oh. There you go. Poor Scott. <laughs> <back> here, <laughs> here, I'll give you the, the quick tour. Yeah. Uh, our, Dear our cast camper. cribs. Dear cast cribs. So there's Scott. There's where Scott sleeps. That folds out. But Scott has a fireplace and a television. Cozy. So nobody feels sorry for Scott. Scott's living life back here on the floor. Yeah, glad he's got his feet up. Man works hard. Scott. <laughs> he's like, I didn't sign up for this part. <laughs> the fridge. Ooh. The fridge. Yes. Nice. Freezer. All it's healthy. Hidden. It's hidden. It's fancy. This is our snacks. We have. A lot of first ones, <laughs> mostly for me. <laughs> that camera angle looks self-serving right now. Although Scott, although Scott was eating the protein bar and the protein stick, Scott, thumb up or thumb down? What do you think? Two, Two thumbs, thumbs up. Ooh. And he's not really into this kind of stuff. So, <laughs> wow. And then, as you note here, all the chips that we brought haven't been opened. Really? So that's because I eat like three of those sticks a day. Uh huh. And like two of those bars a day, which probably also isn't healthy, but nonetheless, that's what we're doing. What is All your, right. what's your, what's your flavor on the, the protein stick? Your go-to. Um, I, I like original, honestly, okay. that, that barbecue one's pretty good too, but I, I like the original and actually the breakfast one's probably my favorite. I just don't have any left. Sure. And then that's the most important part right there. <laughs> Tim. And uh, there's my spot. And so just to uh, show you how we're keeping scent control, that's that scent crusher. The closet. The sh- yeah, that's that pop-up closet, the scent crusher pop-up closet, and um, which has really saved our butts. And that's same thing that Scott's running over here for his gear. So we both have the scent crusher pop-up closet, which is really convenient because basically it's a duffel bag. And once you get to your location, you just pop up. The, there's a couple bars that uh, you put together that 
fit in the bag and you pop this thing up, you put this part out and you can hang your clothes and we crush them once we get back from our hunt in the morning and the afternoon. And then it's basically, you know, any smells, which the camper doesn't really have that much of a smell, but uh-huh. we've also been running that halo unit here in the camper when we're not here during sure. our hunts and helping with, with any smells that might be in here. So that's how we're trying to stay uh, scent free as possible while we're on our trip here. What in time? Well, well, how long do you run that halo unit in the covert closet when you get back from a hunt? Well, Mark and Terry, they say they'll run for like a 10 minute cycle. Uh-huh. I personally been putting mine on 20 minutes. What have you been doing for yours? 10. So Scott's doing 10, I'm doing 20, but I, reason why I've been doing 20 that like, it's pretty warm in the afternoons here. Yeah. And I mean, we've been working up a sweat, so we're not washing our clothes. This is effectively how we're washing our clothes by ozone and crushing them. So sure. I'm just doing that 20 minute cycle to try to get rid of any of that smell that may be on the shirts. Okay. You know, the, the, that guy that left us, that left us the feedback that this isn't a podcast. This is a commercial. He's going to hate me yeah. for saying this. This is not a commercial, but I live out of my covert closet during deer season. Like it's, it's so hand, like it's, it's a rolling duffel. It's so handy to just throw everything in, crush it and throw it in the back of the pickup truck or throw it. It even fits in the back of my, I got to drive a Tacoma. It fits in the back of the, the, the quad cab. Uh, so if it's rainy, I don't have to worry about it, but like everything goes in there after the hunt, you crush it. And then before I go to the hunt, I crush it for a few minutes and, and I can like bring it to work, run to my, my, one of my local properties. It's just, it's so nice. It is. I, this is the first time I'm using the pop-up closet because at home I have a closet and then I use just the gear bag. The re- Usually I use the duffel gear bag, the one that can go on your back. Yeah. And, um, but, but for a trip like this, like it's been invaluable. It really isn't slick. So kudos to them. And Hey, whoever said that comment about this being a commercial can suck it. Oh. <laughs> Uh-oh. It's just real life. This is his real life usage, honestly. <laughs> Yeah, well, it totally, uh, it it totally, it, and it just saves me a lot of time. And I, I hate washing my hunting clothes because, well, you know, you wash it too much and it fades, it fades the camo pattern. It's not good for the garment overall for its longevity. And so, yeah, there you nice. have it. Okay, all right. This well, this tech talk brought to you brought to you by Tim. We got two tech talks. <laughs> yes. That's right. We, this we sh- is more of a gear review, I guess. We should also mention that we're going to start doing that a little bit more. I, I, people keep asking us about the stuff that we're using. I don't yeah. know why. But I they're- don't either. They should be asking Mark and Terry. <laughs> <All right. laughs> hey, I want to know what you guys use to be losers and not kill anything. <laughs> don't do what Donnie oh, we, Don't does. <laughs> we're, we're happy to tell you exactly what we use. <laughs> So, so on upcoming episodes, expect for there to be a little tech talk segment where we talk about the gear that we're using, how we're using it, why we're using it, all that kind of stuff. And if folks have things that they want us to look at or they they want us to review, just, you know, again, let us know over in the Facebook crew page. Yeah, I guess this was uh, episode one of the gear reviews and and inside the podcast because we just gear reviewed the uh, pop-up closet, basically. We're we're awful formal. (laughs) Yeah, I guess that was episode one. There we go. Let's (laughs) let's book it. (laughs) That's how we roll. That's why it succeeds, Tim. Uh, You know what it was? I got too comfortable. Yes. And I started to get fancy. That's what we do. Cool. Well, I think next up... Before you go too far... Uh, that's what i'm known for touch my drum set (laughs) you want that one if you touch my drums i will stab you in the neck with a knife reason why i say this is because that soundboard is mine and mine alone you can touch it this time because i'm not there I put but my when stank I come on back, it. keep your fingers off the <laughs> podcast board. <laughs> so, That's what she said. Should have gone right there. Come on. Tim. Oh, man. It's hard to look at this and also. Yeah, it's easy to judge. But when you're trying to have the conversation and put the sounds in, it's. Tough. That's what she said. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, just, I'll just compensate with a bunch of them here at the end. That's what she said. (laughs) So, uh, so as another tease for next episode, you're your own soundboard. You don't need this. I love myself in these uh, comments. These are just, this is my wife hates me for this reason. (laughs) 
I laugh at my jokes and that's it in my house. They, off, they, they say that oftentimes the thing that draws you to your spouse is the thing that ultimately, ultimately makes you crazy about them. Like crazy mm-hmm. in a not good way. Could be a lot of things in. <laughs> <laughs> the list goes on and on. Me being in Kansas is definitely one of them. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's like a sword that cuts both ways because like, yeah, hey, you're gone. Absence, you know, but then also no one's running the morning show. It's all up to... I've, I've never seen someone root for me so hard to kill a deer. <laughs> it's like, anything? Did you kill one? Has it happened yet? Has <laughs> like, it happened wait, yet? You're never, never this interested. <laughs> the best is when you start getting feedback reports on the kid's behavior. Yes. I'm mm. getting a lot of that. Yep. That uh, yeah. nothing like putting the pressure on from getting uh, those kind of those texts. I, I said last night, I go, well, how's, how's it going at home? It was, it was something like, oh, just your average night of Lola not eating her dinner. <laughs> like, okay, thanks for the feedback. <laughs> yep. Yeah. You almost hate to ask the question. <laughs> yeah. It's probably best not to. <laughs> mm-hmm. That's right. <laughs> so, uh, so next week, I think we got our buddy Jim Ronquest on the show. Maybe somewhere in there, Dustin Lynch though too. He uh, he's texting me now, so we might get him in uh, episode somewhere in between. So wow. it might be before Jim, it might be after, but we're still we're still working on Dustin and seeing what all work he's doing down at the farm right now. It could be the highlight of his career. <laughs> I mean. <laughs> Could go either way. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Let's just assume so. Great. Well, good luck to the next few days of you guys out there hunting. Hopefully, we're seeing a, a deer cast now from you guys real soon. And come home, victors. That's the plan. My assumption will be we're going to come home losers, which <laughs> that's typically the way I like to come home. So <laughs> <laughs> we don't want to deviate from the path. <laughs> <laughs> losers with some intel for next year. Let's look at the bright side. Glass half full. <laughs> uh, yes. Yeah. Well, thanks everyone for watching and tuning in. We sure appreciate it. We'd love seeing all the comments and some of you guys engaging with the content over in DeerCast. So keep that up. Do share the show with your friends. This is the time of year where people are excited about a deer hunting and want to know more, especially like what, what Matt and I have talked about a little bit is we realize that a lot of you guys coming in are like literally brand new to deer hunting. And so we're trying to mix in like some basics with some more advanced knowledge because we want there to be something here for everybody. Um, so so that's kind of the balance that we're walking. And, and, and the more you share the show, the more other people can kind of figure out what this deer hunting community is like and feel like they're a part of something bigger. And, and please subscribe. <clears throat> Honestly, that's how, you know, we can really make this thing go well is by adding some subscribers to the platforms. And I will say this, like Tim and I <clears throat> are probably more on the novice side that we're trying to learn. Like we're kind of going along the stride when we talk about expert advice, it's more from the guests that we bring in. Yeah. And when we talk about the trials and tribulations and the kind of do's and don'ts, that's from the re- real world experience that we're getting out in the field. And as we learn to try to become a better hunter and, and be better at our craft. So we got a long ways to go. I'm not going to speak for Tim. I'm sure he's a great hunter, but I got a long way to go. And right there every with day you. and every season, we just try to keep improving. Yeah. Yeah. Th- I mean, to me, that's the fun of it. It's an education. You never arrive. It's a destination or it's, it's just the process of learning. And so that's, that's what we're doing. And we're glad to have everyone along with us. So. All right. Next episode. Is it Jim Ron Quest? Is it Dustin Lynch? Is it, I mean, who knows? <laughs> we don't. You better tune in <laughs> to find out. <laughs> we better be there to find out. <laughs> yes. Yes. And you will be will back be in, in studio. Kansas? Will I be in Kansas? Will I be in the studio? I don't know. Who knows? Will I be divorced? Will I be happily <laughs> married? <laughs> Depends if I'm in Kansas. Or There's a lot, the a lot riding on this buck, man. I really hope you kill one. <laughs> <laughs> the fate of his domestic tranquility is at stake here. That's Tune right. in to next episode. All right. Until next time. All right. Peace out. See you guys. The results are in. DeerCast said it was supposed to be a great night. Well, here you go. DeerCast said great. It doesn't exist anywhere else but in DeerCast. Hunters love DeerCast's exclusive deer movement forecast. Get ahead of your game with DeerCast. (laughs) We're adding new videos every week, so make sure to click that subscribe button and check out all of our amazing content. This episode of DOD TV was brought to you by Bass Pro Shops and Cabela's.